Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. For those who don't know me, my name is Karishma. I am a senior consultant, part of the HR recruitment team. We have recently had an influx of questions regarding health and safety and particular well-being, given the current market. I sat down with Tasia, who has a degree in human movement, biomedical science. She's also a mental health first aider and a certified wellness designs practitioner. Here's Tasia with more. Hi, my name's Tasia Mitsoulis. I'm a workplace health and wellbeing specialist. I've spent the last 20 years empowering employees build better health outcomes and organisations build engaged and energised workforce. So Tasia, our first question um, that we received was how has the health and safety function transformed and what will it look like in the next six months? At the onset of the pandemic, organisations prioritise the physical health and safety of their employees. We started to see more people working from home. The employee experience of working from home and working with hybrid teams was very diverse. The focus moved from the physical safety to psychological safety. This will continue over the next period of time. We will also start to see organisations invest in health and wellbeing programs that look at the holistic uh, employee all aspects of their wellness. So we're going to start to see the emergence of connection, social elements of well-being, financial literacy, and also how organisations will support the professional progression of their employees. So there's been a shift away from um, the physical safety to the psychological where we, we are now, and then there'll be a holistic lens for the next period of time. And what skills do you think will be in demand post COVID? We're starting to see the emergence of a culture of care. A recent article published in the World Economic Forum identified, identified three skills that are important through the pandemic. First of these skills has been to lead with empathy, honesty, and to be transparent. The second of those desired skills is to be agile. Uh, we need to be highly adaptive to the multiple and rapid evolving conditions. And thirdly, we need to value our employees, to be compassionate so they can bring their best self to the workplace. So what is it that we know about a caring culture? When people feel valued, they bring their best self to work they give above and beyond with discretionary effort. They're more likely to stay in an organisation for a longer period of time, and they're also likely to promote their organisation to their family and friends. What advice would you give for traditional health and safety candidates that may be looking to improve their wellbeing capabilities? So what I've got here are three points that I want um, to be considered. There needs to be a development of technical skills so to, to successfully run a, a health and wellbeing program, you need to be able to implement, manage and evaluate the programs and initiatives. Individuals that participate in this kind of work also need to have clarity around their purpose. What are they trying to achieve in this space from an organisational perspective and also um, at a granular level with employees. So having that clarity around what the purpose is in the wellbeing agenda for your organisation is critical. And the final consideration um, in my mind is that an organ, uh, to, to execute wellness and embed it in an organisation, it takes a village, right? So there needs to be um, business partnering amongst um, a whole range of entities. So health and safety, HR, remuneration and benefits group, diversity and inclusion. All those functions need to work together collaboratively on a shared vision and execute 
in alignment to achieve better health outcomes and, and support people to feel good about being in the workplace. What advice or tips would you give to organisations looking to develop or improve their wellbeing programs? In order to move the health and wellbeing agenda forward, organisations need to establish the following foundations. Firstly, there needs to be meaning to the wellbeing program. So what does wellbeing look and feel like in that particular organisation? There also needs to be purpose. Organisations need to have clarity around why they are um, delving in, into the wellness space. The why needs to be aligned with business and also um, employee outcomes. Thirdly, there needs to be ambition. Clarity around what wellbeing can do for the business. Fourthly, there needs to be ownership. Who within the organisation is going to own the wellness proposition? How will leaders be supported to promote wellbeing? And what are the expectations for employees? There needs to be a strong communication strategy. So there we're thinking about what would a typical wellbeing conversation sound like? From there, we need to think about, there needs to be an emphasis of personal responsibility. People need to be held accountable to achieve um, the best outcomes. And lastly, and in my mind, the most significant foundation for a su successful and sustainable wellbeing offering is there needs to be senior leadership buy-in. So our senior leaders need to be involved they need to demonstrate uh, healthy lifestyle behaviours and they need to courageously share their wellbeing journey and um, any lived experiences. What are your thoughts around um, the kind of tick box exercise that you see? Yeah. How, how, how would you recommend for companies to move away from, okay, this is our wellbeing initiative, it's all well and good to have it in writing, but what would you say is, is that missing link between having the uh, policy and actually actioning that policy? Yeah, I like that question. So, yeah. so a lot of these things that we've just spoken about mm. uh, are, talk about that readiness. Mm. So mm -hmm. one size does not feel, fit all organisations. So there's a unique nuance to an organisation, yeah. there could be a nuance to also departments. Yeah. So understanding, having data, evidence-based information about the organisation, the industry, and also your departments and people. So there needs to be that structure around what the wellbeing policy looks and feels like. So, you know, that meaning, that purpose that we've just mentioned, it's really critical for those elements to be present, for this to be successful. And it's, and it, you know, there needs to be that um, fine tuning and evalu constant evaluation, constant consultation for it to be successful and stick. Thanks so much, Tarsia, for your time. And hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on the details below.